Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we look at how to validate, highlight and compare your HL7 messages. I'm going to start by loading up HL7 soup. We see here that it comes with a list of sample messages and these I will use to demonstrate the features. Let's start with the basics. Let's look at how we can highlight a particular field in every message. For argument's sake, I'll set my patient's last name to always highlight as green so I can easily find it. I'll just quickly click on the interpretations window to find the patient's name. Now I can right click and choose to highlight the PID5 green whenever it is in the message. You can now see that it's highlighted as green on every single message I have. This makes it much easier to find. You probably notice, however, that the rules extend beyond just checking for its existence. If I go back into the Highlighters menu, I can select other options, like equaling or containing a certain value, or when it actually has any value. I can also go to the Not indicator and highlight when it's not a certain value or doesn't have a value. If I click on a date value and select the highlighting, I get criteria that's more suitable to dates, such as greater than or less than. I can, for instance, select to highlight this date orange when it's older than the current date. This might have been when a system change took place and the orange can warn me of risks. Notice when I change the value of the date, it only highlights if I've got an older date. The red colour highlighter has been given additional functionality. It is reserved for invalid values, those that deserve special attention. One bug I find frequently with HL7 messages are invalid dates. This is surprisingly difficult to spot without highlighters. Let's add a red invalid highlighter to this date field. Now notice as I change this date's value to an invalid date, it instantly highlights as red. But it goes further and tells me the error up in the interpretation window. And it even highlights any other messages in our current set which this error might occur in. If I right click on my current messages, I can create a filter. Here I can only show the invalid messages so I can work through them one at a time to fix the problems I have. And by the way, HL7 Soup has validations out of the box that check for invalid dates on the most popular HL7 message types. Another popular highlighter is where we can show the values are in the data tables. If I right click on the administrative sex, the PID8, and I can choose to highlight the PID8, red and invalid, where it's not in the data table. Here we see that I've instantly highlighted all the other messages that have an invalid value. So now we have some highlighters, let's see what can be done with these. If I navigate up to the Highlighters and Validation menu. From here we can change any of the existing highlighters we already have, including the ability to change them to values that we didn't have in the original message. Something I find extremely helpful is the ability to create different sets of validations. To clone an existing set, I simply click on the plus button and provide a new name for my new validation set. This allows me to make rules for certain customers or applications then easily jump back and forth between them. Perhaps most importantly of all, I can even export out these existing sets to my colleagues or customers so that they can take advantage of them. Imagine being able to create validation rules that will ensure messages will work with a certain integration and then allow others to use this. Your customers or suppliers could be given the set and have the chance to make sure that their messages conform even before you get them. From the management window, we can also generate bulk lists of highlighters from the existing message. 
This allows us to rapidly build large sets. For instance, let's validate all of the invalid dates and data tables. I choose red as my color and my where clause is for an invalid date. I choose OK and see how it generates every single one of these for me. Now I click generate again, I'll include red again and now I'll say where the value is not in the data table. If I say OK, I now have a complete set that will validate this entire message. If I go back to the sample messages, we see that they have a lot of errors. This is because the samples come from real world examples that didn't often conform to the data tables. However, because of the highlighting, it is very easy to go through and fix our values. Now I'm going to show you some of the other highlighting features. Firstly, I'm going to clear out our existing highlighters and I'm going to choose to generate and perform a doesn't exist criteria. This once generated from an existing message will make sure that all other messages have the same segments and fields as a minimum. The fields don't need values, but they have to at least be in the message. It simply creates a filter for the last field in each segment and ensures it's there. Then we have the value is empty highlighter. This scans the current message looking through all the fields and components. If they have a value in this message, then a highlighter will be created that suggests they need to be in the message too. The fields missing from the current message don't have to be in the other message. Finally, we have the value is different highlighter, or simply the message comparer. It creates a highlighter for every field and component and checks that it's exactly the same value. I can now take two messages and see exactly how they differ. I can even generate this from a second message so it highlights both ways. Very helpful when you're looking for subtle differences between the messages. Don't forget that HL7 Soup comes with a free 30-day trial, particularly helpful if you'd like your customers or suppliers to use your validation rules on their messages without cost. You can download HL7 Soup by googling HL7 Soup and clicking on the free trial. Also, if you've found my videos have helped you, then please click like or subscribe to the series so YouTube can inform you when new tutorials are released. Also, comments and suggestions for future videos are very welcome. Thank you.